You see, I'm a freak of nature. And if we was to go one-on-one, -on -one, you take your... Yeah, yeah. Chris gets it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Welcome to a traditional best of three MTG Arena Cube Draft with Travis Simulants Hours and a chat. Chat, say hello to YouTube. You may notice some new things on the screen. Today is my first day as a channel Fireball affiliate, which I am ridiculously excited about. Uh, that means that if you are buying cards at Channel Fireball or signing up for Channel Fireball Premium and you use the code SIMULAN, you are directly supporting the work that I do. If you're buying cards anyway, why not buy them from Channel Fireball? It means a lot to me too because I kind of decided to start making magic content because I was watching the videos on Channel Fireball. So it's kind of like I, I, I went from watching it to deciding to produce, which has left us here. Yeah, I figured we'd just show the Stream Raider screen for the whole draft, and you guys can kind of guess what cards I'm picking or talking about as we're going. Thank you for the reminder, Mandrew. But yeah, anything that you buy on channelfireball.com, just put in the code SIMULAN. You're supporting me. You can't beat Twitch chat, so you ain't even going to try. We are drawing to the end of the cube. I suspect that this will be one of the last cube drafts I have for the YouTubes. And I've kind of tried to explore all of the different archetypes that I could find. Uh, we just did a deck that had two creatures in it with Approach of the Second Sun and the Millie Jace as a win condition. I only managed a 1-2 with it, but that's not my normal style of deck. I think it could have been a 3-0 deck. I certainly didn't play it perfectly. And there's some differences, too, as you're playing cube. If you're someone that's used to traditional limited, like I'm used to something less than half of the cards having relevant text. But my goodness, all of these cards do things here. I haven't done that yet, Harriet. That might be a fun one if we see the pieces for it. So maybe if we can find us a field of the dead, we could build around that. I, I'd like to try to build around and do silly things at this point. We know I've done this a couple times on stream, but we haven't done it yet for the YouTubes. We haven't done the Companion Yorian for the YouTubes. I think we had a 2-1 and a 3-0 with Companion Yorian. That might be fun. The other option is to go into the Black Red Sack deck, um, which I'd like a lot, but we did that yesterday for the YouTube video. I could also go for Overwhelming Splendor shenanigans, which, I mean, makes me happy. But I've done that a lot, too. What do you think, chat? Would you rather see Overwhelming Splendor or Yorian? Or we could take Procession. There's a chance we could take Procession and try to do something really stupid with that. I haven't tried to build around this card at all. Frankly, I've dismissed it. Maybe that's the trick. Crisis and stay open? I mean, it's a cube. You don't need to stay open. Like, it's all good. Uh, yes, I think all of these cards are better than Anointed Procession, but here's the thing. I haven't played with this yet. If I can't do anything with it, I can't do anything with it, we'll let it go. But if I can, this might be pretty interesting. This pack kind of leaves nothing that we're super interested in. Uh, there's a Llanowar Elf if we want to go Rampy, which is not bad, but Mindstone does the same thing and is colorless. Man, I felt like the last pack had a lot of different directions to go in, and this one's just like, no, nah, here's some here's some fine cards. You can play them. Green probably pairs best, although there's tokens in, frankly, all of the colors. So I feel like just staying colorless for another, like, if I'm going to try to force this, even if I'm not, I think the Mind Stone's reasonable. That goes in every deck. But maybe we find something else that's fun. Maybe we don't, but... So Procession with Sram's Expertise and Birth of Miletus. Th this one's kind of cute. But I think Sram's Expertise would go in that, for sure. So we would ramp to the Mind Stone. We would ramp to the Procession, then we play the Sram's Expertise. This deck would probably want a Mentor of the Meek too, wouldn't it? I've seen this wheel a lot, too. I don't know if this is good. I just I, I want to try it out. So here we've got 
Uh, Dreadhorde Invasion, but this doesn't work like I think it does, does it? Yeah, this doesn't work with Anointed Procession. Pyromancer sort of could. But I feel like Shayla is a lot more reasonable here. Are there more tokens in green? Because I don't really remember seeing a lot of tokens in green. I mean, there's this if we wanted to do Naya. Infinite plant. But I, I think Shayla makes a lot of sense here. Ranger is not good now, but should be if I continue down this path. There's also a possibility that I should get off of this path. But I don't want to get off of this path. Yeah, if I don't get them is the part that I'm a little worried about. Now, what if we were Abzan tokens? I guess we could still just be black-white tokens. This isn't really doing a lot, but it could still be fun. This makes tokens, though. This means I'd make two knights every time I made one knight. Okay. Let's talk. Mouth to feed. I think we're beginning to see the line that would work. We can just be green-white. Do token shenanigans. We kind of do need both of those elves, don't we? Riss and the uh, Imperious Perfect or something like that. Hey, that makes tokens. That makes tokens too. There's so many tokens. Like, currently, Ranger of Eos is not in the deck. I'm just hopeful that it will be. Because if we get Riss, then that's another copy of Riss, which would be nice. But so far, everything we've got is either a card that makes tokens, pumps tokens, or works well with tokens. Yeah, Oiva. Oiva would be really good, too. Grandma, right? Which we could also fetch with the Ranger. There we go. There's a plan. I still don't know that it's particularly good, but it could be fun. Now, if I'm in green, that would mean that I could play this Overwhelming Splendor because we could ramp to it. Right? Because there was so much green that I should have been able to spin something here. And I did. It was just this. And it's not exciting. <laughs> and it makes me sad. But I'm going to need some two drops. I guess this is a fine one. I don't know where I'm supposed to get... I guess we could have some counter shenanigans with tokens. I don't even know that I'm playing that. There's an argument that this would just be better. And it probably would be. Like, I should have two drops if I'm playing green-white. Hey, 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 maybe we can make two zero four walls. I like where this is going. I just love picking random cards like that and then trying to build around them in this cube. And I feel a bit freed from like the correct pick mentality. I mean, that's pretty good too. Let's take that. Yeah, I'm familiar. I think it's Divine Visitation or something like that. Like, that one's a, a, a bit pushed even for me. I'm just going to hack this. I don't think we'd be playing anything here. And I'm never beating that, so get out of here. Like, it's nice to be able to just sit down and play with magic cards in a format where... It's not. It's still competitive adjacent in that people want to win, but the, the cost structure just doesn't really encourage it. This could still potentially get in here if we do Abzan, but I would need some pretty pretty good fixing. A Ketris Monument would be nice, but we're presumably going to have a lot of spells. So let's, let's see what we can do. Dawn of Hope is a possibility. Let's 
Yeah, Dawn of Hope is probably just what I need, isn't it? The challenge is that card is so bad. But I mean, so is Anointed Procession. If the the concern is that I shouldn't be drafting bad cards, we've we've made a wrong turn a long time ago. Yeah, I wish they'd do that too, personally. Sacred Cat is pseudo-reasonable. Glass Casket, but would be nice for interaction. I'm wondering if I could spin the cat. Like, there's some possibility we won't Whisper if we think the mana's going to get really good. I'm not convinced that it will. Because, like, sacrificing tokens to bring back the Angel of Invention and then make more tokens, like, I, I could see some loops going. Module is amazing if you can find Cather's Crusade. It's pretty bad if you can't, though. This is a tough one for me. I think I'm going to take the Glass Casket and see what I can wheel. So Amiria's Call should be nice with the tokens. So should the Castle Arden Veil. Shayla does to give counters. Yeah, I, I kind of like the repeatable way to do this. Let's give this a go. I'm, st I'm still not entirely sure we're doing this. Like, we're almost mono-white tokens at this point, aren't we? If we're going to consider the Abzan stuff, this isn't bad. Loxodon could sort of be reasonable here. <laughs> hey, Richard, what's up? Uh, we're not sponsored. We're affiliated. Uh, but that's a very good thing. That means there's a code that you can use whenever you buy anything. I gotta take the Godless Shrine uh, from Channel Fireball that directly supports the content I'm creating. I'm not gonna re-record the joy of drafting, but future episodes, because uh, there will be a season two of that, uh, will be brought to you in part by Channel Fireball. Yeah, I, and I don't know that we're getting that aggressive. There's a possibility I wanna play like base white and sort of splash this. This makes tokens though, so never mind. There's the divine visitation. This this is tough. I want both of these. But I think the Garrick makes a lot more sense where we are now. And as as much as I've been hacking these, there's some possibility I could wheel this. But now like I feel like I have a reason to be green white. This makes tokens. I want to make tokens. I like making tokens. This makes tokens, too. And is a 3-drop. Okay. Let's do that. There will be a lot more joy in the near future, is what I'm trying to say. The mana's not getting there for the Bastion to get in the stack, so it is what it is. We just gonna have to let that go. This guy makes a token. This would be a pretty absurd with what we're doing. I'm just concerned that the Anointed Procession is going to be the last card we play out. And then it's going to be bad. And I'm going to be upset about it. The mana's going to have to get a lot better for me to play this, but I'd like to have it. Because I, I think this is right out. I haven't seen a green-white duel that we could conceivably take. We could play that. Pretty nice. It also makes a token if we happen to get some Azorius mana in here as well. But I think nearly everything we've got actually works with this plan. And if I will the Divine Visitation, why the heck not? We'll try it. I guess we want a History of Banalia. Is one of the better things we could open or get past in pack three. And then, of course, the, the Elves. And Oiva. There's a lot of cards we could, would still like to see. I don't think you're supposed to go into this deck for Anointed Procession, by the way. If you're going to try this at home, I think you would want to get the cards that make the Procession good first and then get the Procession. But like I said, I'm, I'm just having a good time 
experiment not here. Uh, so Blossoming Marsh could make the Bastion a possible splash if we think we need it. We can consider that. We don't need any of this. I'm just going to let the blue go. We're not really wheeling much, but we should still get their own playables. We'll just have ugly mana. We're definitely fighting most of the table for green, because that, that pack we passed earlier, I think, had three green ramp cards in it, and none of them came back. This is an interesting way to potentially search up the Angel of Invention, which I think we'd be very interested in. So even though we're not really going to play it early, it would be worth playing. Start to finish makes tokens, but it's not particularly good. She finds creatures or lands, which is interesting because we're not actually playing that many creatures, right? Like, we've got five of them. She's probably still worth playing, and I, I think probably our pick here. Like, I think I'd certainly play the start to finish in the two black duels and just assume it's a bad raise the alarm that could get turned on later. But I think Vivian actually gives us sort of a reason to be doing what we're doing. It's difficult for me not to mention the Bag of Holding, too, because I really like that card. But this this is just not what's looking for it. The Fauna Shaman would give me another way to find it. Crypt Breaker would be very nice with the Procession, but we don't have the mana for that. Swift Response is reasonable, too. The, the, the issue is like, yes, I could cash in creatures for the Angel of Invention or the Shaylai, but I'm not going to have creatures to cash in, which means I probably need to be grown up and take the Swift Response. We could potentially get that pumped pretty large, and I could just put the Questing Beast of Good Card in here, but I want to stick to the theme. I guess I'm kind of accidentally doing my own stipulation drafts. Well, we talked about how much we needed this card. And we got past it. That's swell. If this wheels too, that'd be swell. But this is one of the cards we were specifically looking for. There's no card in this pack that makes tokens, which is a little disappointing. Uh, but I guess we could take this 3-mana 1-1. One, one. <laughs> now it looks like... I should have been doing what I've been doing. I have no duels. That's embarrassing. Doesn't the first row in games make a token? Again, not that it's good or I should be taking it here. But I'm pretty sure it does, right? It even draws cards and makes gold. Who doesn't want gold? I want gold. Oh, neat. There's the other elf I kept saying that we wanted. It's in the same pack as Ajani, which makes me sad. But this we want. We want much. Yeah, we'll get two gold tokens. Unglued is getting it. So next pack is Oiva. We bring in the ranger and the deck is done. That's my plan. I mean, this only doubles, no, it would double this too. We could kick this and get five of them. But I think at this point it's probably more reasonable to accept that we're probably playing Warrant as a removal spell, and occasionally we could have the blue source for it to do a thing. Because I don't think the tap land hurts us that bad. I also don't think I want nine of those. I, I may need to take out Overwhelming Splendor. This makes tokens too. Because the, the plan was we were going to play Overwhelming Splendor with a bunch of ramp, and then we didn't get any ramp. 
So I don't really know why you would just put that in your deck. This won't actually find anything because we're not playing any creatures. But I could put a helm on a random token and make more tokens of tokens. Yeah, and if we ever get the helm on the angel, all of a sudden everything has hexproof forever. I don't think I'm supposed to play Bag of Holding in this deck, but I'm still going to take it because it makes me happy. We didn't wield the Sacred Cat somehow. I don't quite understand that. And yet, the Script Breaker wield. I'm bad and I feel bad. I think Black White might have actually got us a better deck because we'd have had the Bastion and some other cards there, but I'm not unhappy to have... Both of the token producers that I wanted in green white, as well as the suit swarm. I, I think we're really only missing Oiva. And I think the deck can function ish without the. Uh, that makes a token too, doesn't it? No, it doesn't make it. If I need to bring in Bastion, I've got the mana to do that now. I think this deck can function without the uh, procession, was what I was trying to say. Which is good news, because there's going to be times we don't draw it. I think we have enough lands that I could play one of them. I don't think they do enough on their own. Because with the Bastion, I don't really have ways to consistently blow up tokens. I think the Black-White deck would have been using uh, things like Whisper to do token shenanigans. Give me six, seven, eight, seven. Okay, so this would give me nine, seven, which I think is about what I want. So I think I'm pretty happy with the nine white sources, even though some of them are going to be tapped. It's not like we're looking to burst out there. And I do feel pretty comfortable letting the um, overwhelming splendor go. Like, it's not crazy to think that we could get there, but with just Mind Stone and a gold token that we might get, I don't think that's the droid I'm looking for. But this, this, this looks like a winner to me. All right, let's do our Stream Raiders battle and we can uh, put this through its paces. That's a boss fight. Neat, I hope we win. I guess if you're going to start on the sides, you need to be able to burn down the boss before those dinosaurs get you. Oh, is this the one where the dinos were on our side? Sure looks like it. Maybe if you've killed the queen, the dinos are on your side. They have dangling eyeballs? What the heck? Those are some pretty rough-looking dinos. Uh, Dave with the kills, Miori with the assists. <laughs> Rewards for Michael, Orcish Artillery, Fort, and Citrimba. That's pretty funny looking. All right, we got a blue chest? No. We got a gold chest? No. So we are going for green. I guess they're supposed to be like zombie dinos or something. Who knows? This is a good chest. Merry Christmas! Actually, I could do the zombie voice I did for the audiobook. Merry Christmas! This looks all right. Doesn't have anointed procession, which I think it would like, but.
What do zombies eat for at Christmas? Candy brains. Reckon we're looking for another land here and we're in business. What was an error? Oh, the error when this targets itself. Yeah, there's something about... Arg. I think Jesus became a lich, not a zombie, right? Merry Lichmas. Happy Yule. Whatever holiday you celebrate, I hope that you are enjoying it. I guess we could just kill him too. What's up, closed? Poor Garrick. I've grown tired of this. He was just a lightning bolt to face. I think Vivian would be okay here. Let's tear this place apart. Feel the wrath of Scala. They should have to use the fireball for her. Perhaps they're feeling the wrath of Scala. Whatever that is. Okay. Every defeat is a slick plays. I'll see what we can do. What are you protecting? That guy? Okay. That is the beardiest of swords. I like the beard sword quite a bit.
Dang it, Bobby. I had a plan, and this was not part of it. Alright, so we swift response that dude. And then get things get going. Because I can't do this and swift response. But I definitely need to swift response this guy. I could play the Fiend Artisan too and maybe block that. I'm a little concerned about my life total. But I should be able to stabilize after this as long as they attack me with their Ferocidon and there's no reason for them not to. I, could, I should have played the Mind Stun too, sure. What? Why in the world would you not attack with that Ferocidon? I am baffled. I am truly baffled. Maybe they're just planning to kill me with it. Okay. You got me. Risk it to what? I think this is the only thing that would get them there. Arg, out of range. Oh, we should draw the card first. Can't really play that right now. But I can, well, I can't really play this either. Well, it's still a 1 1. And we need to have some blockers available. I feel like they have to swing with it here, but maybe they don't feel the same way. No, I don't want to take two more damage. I think we'd be mostly dead if we played that out. I have to top deck an answer to this or I'm just going to die. I'm trying to think if there's anything I can actually get with this that matters, but I, I, I certainly can if I'm down to two. They do take two. Them being at six is functionally irrelevant. I, I don't think any of these cards matter unless I top deck an answer to Raptor Jesus. Like, Raptor Jesus is just going to kill me. I'm still baffled they haven't been attacking with it. Maybe this is my last chance for them to attack with it.
It's crazy suspicious. They're going to attack with it next turn, though. Watch. So they have to block this. They eat the token, but that doesn't particularly matter. I'm eating a token. I might could have Adam. I didn't see it. I was so happy I drew an answer to Raptor Jesus. I kind of didn't care, but I, there probably was a line there. little late for you. It's possible they had the big brain. It's difficult to say for sure. I mean, it's always a concern when you're streaming. I could have made two tokens, but I think I like having bigger stuff. I have to pump again. So I'll pump again. That just trades her off though, so maybe that's not the right thing. Hey, thank you very much, Ewan. Because they're just going to attack here. So if I attack like this, I'm just forcing that. Yeah, but I, I can't really chump it, right? Because they're going to have a hasty dude, too. So what would my blocks be with the hasty dude? I could chump that, eat this. I could go to one and then kill him on the crack bag. And they can't make anything not block with this, so it's just a 4-4 four, four haste. It does, so if I chump it, I'd be going to 2. Oh, shoot. That's bad. This is trading for the Serpent, then. There's nothing I can do about that. Where is there? No, not at five. I have to trade this for the serpent. And probably be dead. Although Anointed Procession bringing in two attackers next turn could be interesting, I can't actually equip it to anything. Yeah, I, I think I'd, I miscounted the trample there and got got. 
Stone Coral Serpent's also very good. To the surprise of no one. They can't give this first strike at least. I also forgot about the Mentor on this. Yeah, I was just making sure these were the best blocks I could get, and I think that they are. But I, I don't think it leaves us really in a position to do anything. That sucks. We were close there. We were close there. I'm still just baffled about the Raptor Jesus play. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't attack with it there. And it's so, I mean, it's so good against me. There's basically nothing I can do about it. We would need a takedown. If they're never going to attack with it, Swift Response doesn't stop it. But like, as soon as they play that, my game plan's over. I guess Overwhelming Splendor is an out to them stalling out. And it's probably better than the Helm of the Host. But that that's that's what we got. What's up, Ganja? It's just a bizarre game. This one's not very good on the play. It doesn't have any of the things we're looking for and can't really interact. It does have something to do if it floods out and any creature can make it better. So I, I, I think I still keep it, but this is not a beautiful hand. What feelings do you have about Arena? It still makes me happy that this card honks when you play it. That's fair. If paper isn't is your jam, arena may not be. But I haven't played paper in ages. What sorts of decks are you drafting? If, if you want to just win in cube, you need to bite the bullet and draft the aggro decks. They get you more wins for sure. You need to, yeah, even if you're not drafting an aggro deck, drafting a deck that has a plan is su super useful. And that even gets my fiend artisan. I don't like it. You're not doing this to me today, Auto Tapper. I think I'd like to leave up the inscription. Just in case they go for another removal spell or in something on blocks. It's nice to have for uh, Raptor Jesus potentially.
No, eh, or maybe it's just good enough. If they don't get Raptor Jesus, we're in pretty good shape. If they do, we kind of die. Interesting that. Let's hope they don't get Raptor Jesus. I do think digital games and paper games are very different. But for me, I'm a digital boy. I can see why Raptor was eventually banned out of standard. It, it's just like making certain strategies not viable. Which doesn't seem like a fun way to play the video game. There's just a lot of stuff to do in paper that isn't playing the game, like shuffling and walking around and waiting for pairings and... Yeah, fair enough, Stein. There's some card interactions that are just kind of tedious to do in paper, too. This is also kind of not the time for paper magic with the pandemic and everything going on. But that should be available again soon one day. Arg! This could be an ugly turn. And again, it could be all right. Man, I wanted that. 
Although I still don't think it would have been wonderful in this deck. It would have been at least okay. Mindstone doesn't need to be in play right now. It will. Just not right this second. I don't see a reason not to pump this now. Like, I don't have an attack, but... Let's get this off where they're less likely to be able to respond to it. It is the aggro deck. The aggro decks are usually pretty good. The Stone Coil Serpent's a bit of a beating. Don't say that, Harriet.
And the beautiful part here is we can take some damage, and it's kind of okay. And I can probably get this killed. Like, I think we can just take some stuff off the board here and be pretty comfortable. This means we're taking 16 here. I mean, I wouldn't say that's super comfortable, but they don't have a board and we do. So again, I, I wouldn't call this comfortable, but I also don't know that we have that many other options. I suppose the other option would be to trade this off for that token, get the two flyers and begin pumping them, which does give us some more blocks on future turns. Which is pretty reasonable, I think. It's only preventing one point of damage, but it gives us better blocks next turn. Trading off the 4-3 with the 4-3 is better than trading a 4-3 for a 3-2. Yes. Yes. I would agree with that statement. This is going to trade either way. Fair. That one. Where'd they go? I don't understand. I was just getting started. I like it. All right, we do have a Stream Raiders battle to do. And I heard a knock at the door a minute ago. I'm going to see if that's a package. So I'm going to pause the YouTube recording. YouTube, you will join us in round two. All right, here we go for round two. That's Waldo, Andy. That's Waldo. If you've been saying your prayers to Waldo, you've kind of been doing it wrong. Dear Lord, baby Waldo. Did, you know, touche. Maybe you have been. We need to turn the cat green so we can get lands. It is important to get lands. More like Pillar of Lame. Am I right? We say our prayers to green cats. Magma Spray is not in the cube. Pillar of Lame is in the cube. I still don't quite understand why there's a card from Avacyn Restored in Arena, but not a card from Am and Cat Remastered, or Am and Cat, but like, I don't really have to understand, do I? Would have been a really good turn. To have drawn a land, but then I didn't.
Yeah, I'm not really sure why Silent Departure is there either, but I, I don't have to be. I do not have to know these things. I mean, I think we understand literally why it's here. Find that. I'll lead. All right, cross your fingers. Those are the real questions, Orkish. Those are good reasons to be here. I can Cabria take down this and be pretty well set up. I could also just have it as a land. It's weird to not want to play anything when you play your SRAM's expertise. But that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I'm going to have the gold next turn anyway, so maybe I do just want to kill this. I mean, I'll find another land anyway, and I'm about to cast an Angel of Invention. Like, I could cast Vivian and find the land with her. They were scared of this last turn. I don't, I don't really know why. Um, but if they're going to continue to be scared of it, I would like that. So the affiliation means that I have a code that you can use when you make a purchase at channelfireball.com. If you're going to sign up for Channel Fireball Premium, or you're going to buy a card for your commander deck, or you're going to buy a box of cards to draft with your buddies when this quarantine is all over, then you can use the code SIMULAN at checkout and you are directly supporting the stream. It's cool to be supported by your local game store. Uh, no one knows what exactly the future will hold, uh, but there are exciting things in the future for the Simulant stream. We'll get them through Channel Fireball, Andy. I mean, this just still seems pretty good to me. S E M U L I N. I mean, technically, yes, but I want to play more. It's also not lethal if they're not tap tapped out. You never know what they might have.
They could have blocked here and taken two more points, so it's it's pretty far from lethal. Angel was two points of damage. How this thing goes is the wilds are my shield. I guess this means I need the blocker now. Good luck, Limestone. This is too much stuff to leave up. But I'm going to continue slow rolling this just a little bit longer. Seen things that would break someone like you. I can't imagine this going terribly poorly from us from here. They can fireball for 10, but they can't get through any other damage. And they have to kill Vivian this turn or kill me this turn. Oh shoot, I can't block that. Mistakes may have been made. I 
I probably did. But I was just having fun making tokens. Blender looks pretty good again, but I don't know that I like it on the draw. Because again, we don't have that much ramp. I've only got one thing to get with the Ranger, and it's a really good thing to get, but usually if I only have one good thing to get, I don't want to play the Ranger that much. Like, would the deck be better if I took the Anointed Procession out and put the Ranger in? Yes. The game shouldn't go as long if they're playing Hell Rider, Hell, Hell Rider and Unblockable crap. Like, there's very little in my deck that can actually block that thing. Yeah, it would be good as a second copy of Riss. I'll give you that. Yeah, I could I could cut the helm and play the Splendor. That's not crazy. It's like, I, I don't need the helm against them. Really, at all. I mean, the Ranger is also just a good card. How old you? How old were you when you started playing Magic, Zach? What's up, Rabba? They've got better stuff to kill, but I don't have anything to do. Like, I'm going to tap out for the next three turns. So I don't really have options to save that. really like to cast this in a three drop, so I think I'm gonna... draws two cards currently. That's not super scary. I really just need to hit like consistent land drops, but I don't have the ability to do that right this second. I guess Vivian final land is reasonable, but now my blocks get weird. But it's really all I need to do is get to the point that I can play a land. Because I'll have the gold token next turn. Let's see if you're worthy. Balance comes.
They're still going to have an arbitrarily large beetle when the Splendor lands, but we can handle that. I want to give them one turn to blow it up if they can, and then we'll just kind of start to go nuts. This has been pretty good out of the size board. It might just be better than the helm. No, it doesn't grow anymore, but it'll stay a 4-4 because of the counters. Now, they may have an instant speed way to destroy this, so we need to be a little careful here. I want to make blocks that will work in such a way that if they don't have that, we're still okay. Like, if, if they're able to destroy it at instant speed, we're still fine. Embercleave too, but sure, that leaves me taking, what, 10? I'm okay with that, because it's not going to get me again. So I'm, I'm trying to block as if they have a naturalized, because there is a uh, wilt in the format. Yeah, the Embercleave I'm not super scared of. I mean, I'm a little scared of, but not super scared of. That can't help you. I probably don't even need to worry about it, but... This may be the first time they've played against Overwhelming Splendor. Which is fair, it's not a card that pops up very often, but it's pretty dang good! So it looks like we got time for a Stream Raiders battle before we do the last one. If there's enough of us, there may not be. Nah, it looks close. Yeah, we're fine. Still haven't drawn Anointed Procession, which is probably good. I think it may very well be the worst card in the deck. Me with the kills, Krizzy with the assists. Gold for Citrimba and Adamaniac. Scrolls for Silence, Milton, and Krizzy. And gold for me, too. Go me. My power grows. Level 25 Monk. Get wrecked. All right, y'all know what to do on these. We've got a corner. If you corner, we win. So just place your units in this blue area around here, and you can put ranged units in the purple. 
Right, Uno Mas, and then we have victory. Hopefully. Yeah, I think I drew it when I was pretty much dead on board, or, or definitively dead on board. I still have dreams of memes. Alright, we got a two mana do nothing enchantment. To start. This gets reachers only. Okay. Decent one to get. And now the problems begin. We just need a little land. No! They have the combo. It's a good combo. I don't know why they didn't sacrifice it on their turn, but I'll take it. I'm trying to decide how much I care about their stonk pile and how interested I am in blocking because I, I can just make a 1-1 one, one here. I could consider playing the perfect, but it's just going to die. I could also just play Shaylai. That doesn't really give them good attacks. I think I like that. Then if I hit another land, which is already pretty dang good for us, they're like, what are they supposed to do? Land didn't get hit, which is unfortunate. So let's find it. Would you like to see what's left of Sky? Come to me. This should put a lot of pressure on them to interact with Vivian, and I don't even care if she dies. I don't think I care about their stonks. They can make one token a turn with it. Stonks are down. Stonks are very down. 
I don't know that the Splendor's doing much here if they're looking to do stonk stuff. Although, I, I guess maybe it is. It's possible that should have just been in the deck over the helm anyway. That might have been too cute. I'm like marginally interested in the Arachnid dude against them because it just blocks a bunch of crap and then comes back pretty cheaply. But, I mean, the whole deck is, is built to be able to interact cheaply. Except for the expensive cards. So, I guess it's not the whole deck. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. It's got Dawn of Hope. It's obviously a keep. Yeah, if I'm going to play that, I should probably bring in the Ranger. But, like, the card to take out for the Ranger is definitively... The Procession. And I can't take out the Procession. So, here we are. Nice limestone. Does this do anything now? I could just swift response a token. That's pretty sad. Honestly, I kind of don't hate just trading it for a token. Because we're about to get some expertise up in here. Or maybe just play the 3-4 and not care. Hopefully they just kill it. That's like the best case scenario. Because it doesn't matter and we don't care. Gotcha. I 
kind of just want to glass casket that and play out all my token makers. But if I draw another land, we can start doing some silly things. Like that. You control, okay. Now I care about stonks. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. <laughs> okay. I guess they care about stonks too. Alrighty, YouTube, thank you guys and gals for tuning in to the draft today. Uh, this is probably the last cube I will get on YouTube um, for cube draft. I can't remember if I said that or not. I'm kind of tired today, not operating at 100%. But I appreciate you guys and gals tuning in. There will be more YouTube content coming, probably of the Chaos Draft varieties and Zendikar Rising varieties chat. Say goodbye to YouTube, and YouTube, if you would like to come by and join the stream live, you can do so at www.twitch.tv slash simulan. And if you'd like to directly support the content, use the code simulan when you check out at channelfireball.com. Y'all have a great one.